Hello, and welcome to the Adrian Ross Show, another basketball edition. I want to talk about the Indiana Fever game versus the Minnesota Lynx on Saturday, a game they played after having a whole lot of days off. They were off for six days and then came on the sixth night to play against a really good team. Now, I put out a video on Friday in which I said that there were some dynamics at play that would have an impact on the game. One of those dynamics was the time off. See, when you are, you know, you're rolling, you're cooking, you've got the momentum, you want to ride the wave. They undoubtedly needed the month off during the Olympic break. But what you don't want is to be rocking and rolling after you come back. You've got two wins, you're playing well, and then after two games, you're off now for six days. That's something you don't want to do. You want to ride the wave. They didn't have an opportunity to do that, and it showed. They didn't come into the game with, uh, with a sense of urgency, it seemed. They didn't play with intensity, and yet there's still good news. Make sure you hang in there for the full video because I'm going to talk about some of the things I noticed about the game. Even though we, I did a live during the game, we had a blast during the game and some frustration, and then we hung out afterwards and talked some more about the game. But I'm going to go over some things now that I've had some time, and I'm going to show you some footage of, um, of some key points that I want to make concerning defense, uh, assuming YouTube will let me show you. Uh, the video. But before we get down into it, I want to say thank you for every subscriber to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe, if you like, if you share. And of course, if you are subscribed, once again, I appreciate the community we are building here. So now let's get deep into Minnesota versus the Indiana Fever. Let's go. Indiana lost the game 80 to 90, which I say is good news because if you, like me, are watching this game, you're thinking the Indiana Fever is not playing well. You're thinking Minnesota is playing much better. And yet, when you look at the scoreboard throughout the game, Indiana continues to fight, continues to get closer. I think twice. They were down by 13 in the first half and in the second half. And yet they lost the game by 10, a game in which Caitlin Clark did not play her best. I know if you're looking at the stat line and you didn't watch the game, you're thinking, well, what do you mean Caitlin Clark didn't play, didn't play her best? She had 23 points and she had eight assists in this game. And you're going, how do you say she didn't play her best? She didn't play her best. If you see it, you know. It wasn't a great game for Caitlin Clark in spite of that stat line. Uh, Aaliyah Boston had a double-double. She had 15 rebounds and 10 points. But this is further evidence of what I've been saying, that a double-double is not the gauge for having great play because Aaliyah Boston didn't play a great game or an extremely intense game. And their defense was seriously, seriously lacking as I'm going to show you. And in this game, this is a situation where Indiana was outcoached and they were out hustled. So the responsibility for what went down falls on coaching, but it also falls on actual playing. Okay. And when I say out coached, I don't just mean out coached uh, on the court. I don't just mean during those two hours. I mean, before they ever step foot in the gym, there was out coaching that went down and it showed up in the performance. And so we're going to talk about those things. Katie Lou Samuelson. I like her. I think she makes a great teammate, but she can't knock down open shots. And it's a problem. And she's a liability on defense. So that takes me to Coach Christie's sides. Why? 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 Is Lexi Hall not getting more minutes? Now, there are some people who are saying they're riding Christie's sides about that as well. 
But some people are saying after Lexi Hall has such a great game last Sunday, their previous game, where she could not miss in the in the, in the fourth quarter, like she was on fire and she had 22 points. And so people were saying she was supposed to start because of that. Now, I'm going to disagree a little bit. Just because someone has a great game doesn't mean that they all of a sudden move into the starting lineup, right? If if you just have if you ball out for one game, you know, no, you don't necessarily get that, you know, get to have that spot. But Katie Lou Samuelson has not been balling out for a while. You know, if it was just a bad game that Katie Lou had one time, I'm going to say, well, you know, you can't necessarily switch up the starting lineup because she had a bad game one time or because Lexi Hall had a good game one time. But Katie Lou Samuelson is just not knocking down open shots. And it's a problem. I like her. She seems like a great teammate. But she's not producing where it needs to be, where she needs to produce. Lexi Hall, her shot doesn't always fall either. But again, that Sunday before, she was knocking down shots. And during the live, she came in, in, in the fourth quarter, she came shooting shots. And she was knocking some shots down, a couple shots down. I was calling her, what did I call her, fourth quarter Lexi, you know, because she was doing her thing. But it's not just the offense that we want from Lexi. Lexi brings intense defense watch how she plays defense she plays well she slides her feet she's quick she's got an arm up she's sliding 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 like she's supposed to be sliding you need her on defense so yeah she should be in the game more and why christy size continued with the lineup she continued kept samuelson in as long as she did is a problem okay but uh, in addition to that Coach Cheryl Reeve, she was prepared for the fever. She she was prepared. Uh, they were ready to they they turned on uh they turned on the, the fever, what the fever like to turn on other people. You're gonna see this. They get the ball, they're pushing the ball in transition. As we're going through the live, people are saying, How come the fever? They're not running, they're not running, they're not running. Part of the reason why they couldn't run like they needed to run is because they couldn't get stops on the defensive end. You need to be able to get stops out, let the ball and go. When you're taking the ball out of the net over and over and over again, it's going to limit your ability to get out and run. And then you got to grind it out in the half court. And that did not go well. It just, it didn't. Um, Caitlin, there, there was no answer. There was, there were no adjustments for how they were playing Caitlin. Caitlin was, they're not running, they're not running stuff for her to get her open. I said at when this new season, uh, new half of the season started, I said it may come down in the second half of the season. When we talk, we start talking about playoffs and stuff, it may come down to coaching. Okay. And so there was nothing there for Caitlin. And so you've got Dantas shooting three pointers. And so I hear she can knock down those shots. But that shouldn't be your first option. So I'm yelling and I'm saying, why are you taking that shot? Like move the ball at least, reverse the ball, and then you take your shot. But here's the thing. At least she was willing to shoot. I thought Caitlin was uh, hesitant to, to shoot, especially in the second half. She wasn't taking shots. She was passing up some shots. And at least Dante said, I'll shoot the ball. And Kelsey Mitchell, she had 21 points. You know, she don't mind shooting the ball. But then late in the game, she missed some shots. Um, so, yeah, Dantas had eight points. She was 0 of 5 from 3. I'm trying to figure out, again, at least she was willing to take the shot. But, Dantas, you got Caitlin Clark on the floor. Why are you shooting five three-pointers? You know, her best, she seems to be at her best when she's she's in that mid paint area she's got this little floater i mean not floater she's got this little fadeaway that she that she drops okay but again the team was not intense and she at least came out there even ripped the re rip ripped the rebound out and she's willing to shoot the ball you know not not what you really want to see but at least she was willing to do something and i felt like other people weren't Nalissa smith she only got to play 10 minutes um she got two points She's a problem. And defensively, 
she was a problem. You're dealing with uh, Nafisa Collier, the Nafisa Collier, number 24. And Alyssa Smith, her time there, even in the beginning of the game, you could clearly see that she was a liability. But as poorly as they played, um, even with Timmy back, we expected Timmy's minutes were going to be managed and it's going to take her a while to get her groove back. She had four points. She plays 16 plus minutes. Um, so, you know, there's that. But this team, as bad as they looked, and I really feel that they just looked bad. They, they looked off. They didn't seem like themselves at all. And yet, Caitlin had 23 points and eight assists. And so the good news is that she's got a bad game for Caitlin <laughs> was 23 points and eight assists. And she didn't play anywhere near her full capability. That's good news because you're not going to always have games where it just seems so off, even though, again, she had she had 23 points. But um, and she had eight assists, but she should have had more assists. She passed a little bit too hard, too far, too hard a couple times. And uh, so she deserved those turnovers. And then there are a couple that maybe others should have gotten, but she seemed to, she just seemed a bit off and she went eight of 18. Um, but a bad game for her was 23 points. Aaliyah Boston, 10 and 15, double, double, but it was not a good game. That's why double, double is not the standard, right? You want to play good games. And uh, she didn't play a good game. All right. So when you consider that she's not playing a great game, CeCe's not playing a great game. They're not being intense. They're being out hustled. Their, their defense is terrible in the game. And yet they only lose by 10 points. And if you were watching the game, it seemed as if they were losing by a lot more than they were. And I, I consider that good news. Because they continued to fight and they continued to stay in it and they weren't even on their game. So that gives me hope that, hey, this is what I got to say as a coach. If I'm coaching this, these guys, after I tell them everything that I'm about to talk about here, what I've already talked about, I got to leave them with that hope. Guys, we, we gave up offensive rebounds. We didn't defend well. We had, you know, we had some issues, you know, going on. And yet we were still very much in this game even down 13 at one point we were still very much in this game and it seemed like it was a bigger deficit than it was there's hope in that there's hope in that you don't want to rely on that all the time this team we're getting down the wire this is playoff time trying to make the playoffs right so you've got to come bring your a game you cannot wait to uh to get in the groove to feel intense and i never ever felt the intensity that i wanted to feel i never really felt like they were going hard after after the, uh, on the boards. I never felt that way. He just seemed off. So they only lost by 10, which is 10 points too many, but it gives hope of what it could have been, especially if they were clicking on all cylinders. So now I just want to show you some footage of how they didn't have it defensively. The, la the last two games after the break, they seem to be doing much better on defense. Didn't work that way against Minnesota. And so we're going to look at a few of these things and uh, with no sound, and I'll slow it down and we'll talk our way through so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we'll look at this in normal time and then we'll slow it down. Okay, ball's coming up the floor. You can see the ball right here. Watch my mouse. Ball's here. Dribbles to the right corner. Continues to dribble. And Samuelson is trying to play defense. Samuelson's trying to play defense. Drives baseline. Samuelson's trying to stay with her. But well, notice... Ball's over here. CeCe's over here. Um, uh, Aaliyah is, has um, dropped down here. And Alyssa Smith, right here, has to be aware of number 24. Has to be aware 
of Collier. But as I back it up, just watch. Watch the Alyssa Smith over here. Here she, here she is. She's looking at the ball. You cannot take your eyes off of uh, Collier. You can't lose sight of her. But she's not looking. She's still not looking. She's still not looking. And then she's still not looking again. She drops down trying to help Samuelson. And what does Collier do? She recognizes ain't nobody paying attention to her. So what does she do? She just hightails it, right? Makes the cut. They know exactly where they're, where, what's going to happen. So she's baseline. There's a whole gap in here. Nobody notices her. And she gives her the pass and bucket. That's a problem. And that's Melissa Smith. That's her assignment. And you have that's why I say out coached. You have to know who you who the people are around you and what they're capable of doing. And they drop the ball on that. So she cuts right through, gets a pass, and bucket. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's look at something else. Okay, this involves Melissa Smith again, and it involves Collier again. And this is where the Lynx turn on uh, the fever. The fever, they love to be able to get a stop, get the rebound, and get the ball up the floor. And in this case, Samuelson over here is going to take a shot, which she misses. And what are they going to do? They're going to push the ball up the floor. And Alyssa Smith is a liability. So watch it in regular speed, and then we'll slow it down. Again, you've got Collier cutting through the lane. So here we go, nice and slow. Samuelson takes a shot. She misses it. Rebound from Carlton. She pushes the ball. They're running, they're running. But what do you notice? Notice where Alyssa Smith is. Okay, so let me back it up. You've got, let's go all the way back. Here's, here's Nafisa Collier. And when Samuelson takes the shot, Nafisa contests. And then when the shot is missed and Carlton gets the weak side rebound, Collier's already taken off down here. Who guards Collier? Nalissa. Nalissa's all the way out here, right? And so as they push the ball up the floor, everybody's crossed the line except who? Nalissa Smith. Then you have over here, is this uh, the other Smith? I'm not sure who this is here, but she's showing her arm right here. And smart, Aaliyah Boston, as she runs down, she puts her arm up so that that pass can't come through there. Uh, Mitchell is right here for on ball. And again, Nalissa is way back here. So she comes. Nafisa Collier took off. You cannot forget where she is. And that's where, as a coach, you should have, they should know it anyway, but you should have reiterated that over and over again before this game. You have to know where number 24 is. You have to know. But she's over here. Nalissa Smith is the one who's supposed to be guarding her. She's the last one down. And so what happens? Nobody else helps out here. What is she? She recognizes where Nalissa is. She cuts in. Because that's what she ought to do, just like she did before what I showed you. She's showing, she's running, she's running, she catches it. And Alyssa Smith, now she wants to speed up, but she's too late. And she turns and doesn't even dribble. Goes straight up for two points. Nobody's able to stop her. Nobody. Now, every, uh, uh, Lee is over here. Samuelson's over here. She catches it and just all the way to the hole. They're kind of late. And haphazard. They're late and haphazard trying to um haphazard. Haphazard works. Haphazard trying to get there to stop her. But again, Melissa Smith. So defense was a serious problem in this game. And you got to know who you're playing against. She should not be open. Let's take a look at something else. All right. So you'll see ball over here. Let's roll.
All right. So, easy three. Ball's coming up. Passes it down here. Now, Samuelson is defending. This is why I say Lexi Hall needs to be in the game. Lexi Hall plays good defense. Lexi Hall makes you work. Lexi Hall slides your feet, okay? So in this situation where you've got Katie Lou over here trying to guard, then what happens? She just gets beat. She gets beat, and now notice this. Here's the other player right here. Can't see numbers, so I can't give you names. But what does she do? She puts her body in front of Aaliyah. So Aaliyah cannot help. Smart. So when the drive, when you got the drive, drive into the basket, and then she just positions her body to block out Aaliyah Boston. Samuelson is way back here because she can't keep up, whereas Lexi Hall could. And you know what? You've got Kelsey Mitchell who comes all the way over because they all know that Samuelson is not going to be able to keep up with her. So if you go back again, Kelsey Mitchell's over here. Samuelson's getting, getting beat off the dribble. This person right here basically just barricades Aaliyah from being able to help. So Kelsey Mitchell has to step up and help, which does what? Which leaves this player over here wide open. So. She drives. She doesn't put it up. She passes to the right corner Carl, to Carlton. She does what? She takes the shot and she drills the shot. But what else? What other option does she have? They're so late. She could have gone over here because Cece, you got Nalissa and she doesn't leave Collier. Cece's over here. And then what does she do? She sees the pass coming. So she needs to go help. So she's got to leave her, her her player and she's got to run over here and help because Kelsey Mitchell had to help over here. So now Cece goes over and then she goes to help, but it's too late. She could have, she could have passed up here. They had so many options because of our poor ability to keep players in front of us. Everybody's got to help. So what does she do? She hits the long ball. She drains the shot. Bad defense creates offense for the other team. Bad defense all the way around. All right, so let's look at something else. Full speed, and then we'll break it down. And again, Collier does whatever she wants to do. Before, I showed you two times she cut through the lane right? On Nalissa Smith. In this case, what happens? Ball's coming up. Coming up. She's coming. See Collier right here? She's coming over here. And Nalissa is the one guarding her. Okay? So, Nalissa's there. She gets, she comes over. Okay? So, Collier hangs out here on the wing right now. And then Nalissa turns her attention over in that direction. So everybody's d up, everybody's d up, everybody's covered here. And so Melissa's looking over in that end. Collier stays there. Melissa's looking at her. But here, watch number six, Carlton. What does she do? She comes over so she can screen, put a screen on Melissa. So Collier will be open. Katie Lou is over here because Katie Lou is the one guarding Carlton. And so here we go. Let's go back. Let's go back. She's got the ball. She passes over to her left. She cuts through. Cece's chases her over here. Now on this side over here, Carlton comes up. Not only does she screen Alyssa, but she's able to screen both Alyssa and Samuelson. She's by herself. Now, here's the problem. Melissa, right here, she doesn't even seem to know the screen is coming. She should be closer to Collier. If she's closer to Collier, then Carlton could not screen two players with her one self, right? But she stays far away. And apparently it looks like 
Samuelson didn't say that there's a screen coming, which we can see the screen coming, screen coming, screen coming. Samuelson didn't tell her? Didn't you're supposed to call out screens? She doesn't even seem to know. Otherwise, she would have stepped up closer to call you. She doesn't. So she gets screened, but not only does she get screened, she way out there. She's screened and she's still screened. Like she still doesn't know that the screen was coming. And so Samuelson is also there. She's got both of them covered. Six here. Carlton has both of them covered, which leaves Collier wide open. And here's that pass. She screens both of them. There's the pass. Now Nalissa Smith is trying to get around. Now Samuelson is trying to get around. She got, look how wide her legs are. She's got both of them covered because they didn't do the proper thing. Didn't communicate, didn't know the screen was coming, didn't, didn't get close enough to call you, who should not have that much daylight anyway. And then what does she do? Catches, and what does she do? She drains the shot. And guys, this is just the beginning. I'm just showing you footage from the first quarter. That's what I'm showing you, okay? And then what happens? You They get to see a couple buckets go in, and then they get confidence. When you start to see the ball dropping, you get confidence. But the defense was, was just bad. It was absolutely bad. And it is what it is, as they say. All right, let's look at something else. Notice how the links continue to move. They're, they're moving, they're moving. So what happens here? And Katie Lou Samuelson is a liability again on defense while Lexi Hull sits on the sits on the bench. Now, this was early in the game. This was, as you can see, 2-2. So they they were they took care of some business early on and they continue. So here's the ball. CC's on ball. Now here's Collier right here. Okay. And then here's uh Smith looking over in this direction. So call your sets the screen, ball screen, and then she runs through, goes to the right corner. She gets the ball there in the right corner. She drives, she takes the drive to the basket, but she kind of loses it a little bit. She recovers, she pulls out. And she passes the ball. Then the ball goes down to the base. But notice what, notice, what do you see here? You see all these, you see this wide open space right here? So when she drove to the basket, every one of the uh, Lynx players are over here on the left side of the court. And now you've got Samuelson who has to guard. Again, Lexi Hall would do a much better job, but she's got nobody to help her because they drew everybody on this side of the court, everybody. And Samuelson, she's, she just can't hang with her. So what happens? Obviously you see that wide open space, it's like Christmas. You gonna take it, what does she do? She does what we would all do. She drives to the basket. And then of course, now you got Aaliyah who needs to come help. She comes to help, but it's too late. And so you got the reverse, you got the layup. Just like that, where does it start? It starts, number one, here with Collier, who sets that screen. She sets the screen, and then she goes. She goes to the other side. She goes down. They get her the ball. We don't know what she she could probably gonna take. She could probably take uh, uh, Nalissa all the way to the basket, but she kind of loses as she takes a fake. She fakes, and then she takes a little jab, and then she comes this way, and she drives. And Alyssa, Alyssa's pretty good at staying with her there. Pretty good. At, she's pretty good at staying with her. Uh, and Collier loses it, whether that's from Alyssa or just from herself. She kind of loses it, but, you know, she recovers. All right. So Leah doesn't get up here and grab that ball. She recovers. She gets it there. And then she passes that ball. And then it was a quick pass. And then she cuts right there. And Katie Lou is stuck over here. They done drag everybody on that side of the court. Just from that drive from Collier. And then everybody kind of moves out. Everybody moves out. Everybody moves out. What do you got to do? You got to move out too. You move out way out. They just lured you all the way over there. And then boom. Basket. Like I said, out coached. You can see it. 
You can absolutely see it. But I'm not blaming all this one on Christy Sides because the lack of intensity is not Christy Sides' fault, but she is responsible for making sure they're prepared. She is responsible for having the right people in the game and recognizing you don't owe it to Samuelson for her to start. You don't owe it to Samuelson for her to stay in. And like I said, this is early in the game, but yeah, it just it just it just showcased uh, what they really uh, need to work on. I just wanted to show you a few things defensive wise, because the Fever has to play good defense to be able to to run the kind of offense they want to run, and the kind of offense they want to run should be not to have to battle it out in the half court because the half court looked bad when they be, when they even doubled CC when they play more intense defense on her, there's nothing that coach sides was able to pull out to, to make it work. And so instead of CC being freed up for shots, you've got Dantes taking three point shots, you know, Kelsey Mitchell, she did her, she did her thing. But again, um, the good news is that, you know, you only lost by 10. That that's the good news. Cause as far as I can see, as bad as you played, um, to only lose by 10 when it seemed like you're losing by, by more means that, you know, if you were playing as you are capable of playing, it would have been a different story. Uh, we're glad to have Timmy back, but she was, she was limited. You know, her minutes were, were, were limited. Kelsey Mitchell with 21, but Aaliyah, um, not, um, but, uh, Nalissa, I should say with just two points in 10 and 10 minutes, Katie Lou with no points. She took four shots. Um, it's, it's, you got to do better than that. Lexi Hall, you know, she came in and she shot four or five, four of five field goals, two of three, uh, three pointers. And she had 10 points. Lexi Hall needs to be in that starting lineup because she's knocking down shots. But not only that, you need the defensive intensity. And so, so you got to do that. But in the process, more good news is that Caitlin Clark, she um, broke another record. With uh, she had 23 points, as I said, eight assists, and she became the fastest player in league history. I didn't just say rookies, I said league history. All right, at 29 games to score at least 500 points, she has 520, and record 200 assists, she has 240. Okay, the fastest player in league history. The league is is headed toward 30 years. It's over 27 years. All right, and so the fastest. So again, you can take some good out of this. All right. Uh, wasn't a good game, but it's a busy week coming up on Monday night. It's Atlanta on Wednesday. It is Connecticut. And on Friday, it is the sky. If I got that all right. So what did you notice? What do you think? Uh, I, I feel like it wasn't a great game from them. I feel like they were lacking intensity. You can weigh in, in the comments and engage with one another about what you think and um, so hopefully things will be better in the next game. We are uh, onward and upward, right? You lose, you learn, and you know what? You keep on moving. Why? Because there's a playoff spot with your name on it and you can get it. I intend to go live for Monday's game. If everything goes well, might run a little bit late. We'll see, but I'm hoping to go live. So I hope you'll hang out with me for that. All right. Catch you next time. God willing. God bless you abundantly.